This month, we begin our journey into the elimination system. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And so we've, we've gone through digestion. Actually, we started out with the respiratory system. Then we did the blood and lymph. Then we did the digestive system. Now we're moving into the elimination system. Here's where we want to get the junk out, right? And so let's look at just an overview of the elimination system. And we really have two two systems that we need to look at. And, and just, all these things are somewhat artificial designations. You have to realize that there's really, when you get down to looking at the actual organs, and the, every organ does its own cleansing and elimination at some level. But then, then there really is a body system for getting stuff all the way out. Okay, and that's what we're gonna look at. We're really looking at the whole body organismally. Um, and so we've got two basic systems. We've got the bowel, uh, that we you know the colon, the bowel that we want to 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 you know look at in terms of getting rid of the the digestive waste. Okay, so that's digestive waste that needs to come out. There's also other wastes that come out through the bowel as the body pulls toxins. That it, even if it comes in through the respiratory system or comes in through the skin, often the liver will process it. You've heard me say this already from the digestive system that we just did. So the liver will process it and then dump it out in the bowel. So the bowel actually can eliminate a, a lot of different uh, toxins and things. And also the obviously the digestive uh, waste. Okay, so here we we uh, back to our diagrams again. We've got the colon. <clears throat> okay, this large the, the the large intestine which comes up and across and over. And we'll talk a, a little bit more about the structure of this. But you can you can see that there's actually some folds and bends. Uh, and and of course this whole thing has to work uh, to to with a peristalsis. You've probably heard of peristalsis where it kind of you know, move the muscles, the smooth muscles, a muscle lining around all this that, that pushes the stuff through the tube, okay? And uh, we haven't even, even in the digestive system, we didn't talk a whole lot about peristalsis, probably something I need to go back and add. Um, so that's the colon, right? And this is all goes, and I want you again to see the structure of this. It's up one side across the front, right underneath the, the liver and the stomach with the transverse colon. So the, the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, and rectum, and then out the anus. So that's the whole large intestine. I mean, that's what I'm calling the, the elimination system part. Now, at this point, this is the juncture between the small intestine and the large intestine. That's where the pancreas sits and secretes its juices. We talked a little bit about that last time. But this really is a, a, a sort of anatomically separate system separated by a valve, the ileocecal valve, which is over here. So this is actually the beginning part of the, the, of the colon is called the cecum. And so we've got the cecum, the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, sigmoid because it's shaped kind of like an S, and then rectum and anus. So all those are the anatomical parts for the colon. Now we also have the elimination system that we know of as the kidneys, okay? Now this system is anatomically totally separate. It is actually underneath the, is behind the whole, uh, uh, the digestive tube. It's not connected to the digestive tube uh, in, in any way, and it's the kidneys and, and bladder, and we have, um, I'm trying to get some of the glare here, and so here's the, the, the two kidneys uh, way up here, they, they're in the back, they're very back, and then it has the urethral tubes and the bladder, uh, and so there's your kidney bladder system, and the kidneys filter the blood and filter out all of the, the you know, stuff that shouldn't be there and maintain balance. And we're gonna talk a lot more about what the kidneys do and how they maintain balance, water balance and salt and, and even you know, eliminating excess sugar and protein if they have to. But they said so a lot of detoxing, a lot of cleansing and filtering. There's a lot of filter. This really, a think, of, think of the kidneys as a filter. Now, but that's not the only elimination. We actually have two other uh, uh, sources of elimination that we will talk again a little bit more about later, but that's the skin and the respiratory system. And you've already heard me talk about the respiratory system. That if the if the bowel is overloaded, uh, and if the it, you know that if if the kidneys are, are not as much the kidneys, but if the bowels are overloaded, the lungs can start to feel it as the toxins are trying to come out the lungs. And then uh, both if the bowel or the kidneys are stressed, the, the skin is an alternative method for detoxing and getting rid of toxins. So toxins can actually come out on the skin. That can actually show up as skin irritations, uh, you know, different, different uh, you know, reactions on the skin, whether it's pimples or, or uh, rashes or whatever. Um, and so those are, those are real parts. Of, uh, of the elimination system, but we would consider them secondary. I'm gonna throw in, which probably I won't talk a, a lot about, 
But the, the tears, the eyes and tears are also a form of elimination. The sweat is a form of elimination. In other words, these are an opportunity for the body to eliminate toxins out through the sweat and out through tears. And anyone who's been under some stress enough to, to have a body reaction, which is to say a stress sweat or tears crying, you can, you, you can make that connection. Under times of stress, you, you might get this weird cold sweaty thing that stinks, it's a stinky sweat. And those are those hormones that are coming out, the, body, the stress hormones the body's trying to get rid of. Tears contain huge amounts of stress hormones. So it's, it's perfectly fine to cry. Don't, don't eliminate your, your, your crying. The crying it might be a very important part of the healing process or the body's stress management process. So don't shut that down. Um, but, but you know, as an elimination system goes, uh, we're kind of for this for this month. I mean, while we've talked about a number of these different aspects to the overview, we really are talking about the colon and the kidneys, kidney bladder system. These are the two elimination systems. These are the primary elimination systems. While we do have some of these secondary systems, they're not um, they're not the uh, not the not the main focus. Now, there are. Um, there are things that you know we we we've, we've talked about the connection between stress and body functions, and just to make a comment or two about stress and elimination, you you can have and we'll we'll talk more about this too. But that you can have a dramatic effect on the elimination system through stress. There's actually have you have you you know heard of someone you know getting so scared they they peed or they lost control they lost lost control of their bowels. And under under huge stress and fear, so certain aspects to stress will actually relax the elimination system and cause things to dump out. Um, and so, if we have constant stress or there's stress signals that are going on, we could be experiencing excessive elimination that you know that that really doesn't have necessarily a pathological source for it in the in the system itself, but that there's actually stress going on that's unchecked uh, and, and, and I don't mean to suggest in any way that it's a psychological problem, it might be, there might be some history or some memory or trauma or something that's creating this, this issue, but it could actually be a more physical, physiological stress, some stress in the, in the, in the nerve functions in the brainstem, I keep pointing to the neck because the, the uh, uh, cranial sacral system and the parasympathetic nervous system is there to help shut down certain stress responses, whereas the sympathetic nervous system is there to, to you know, keep things going. And so, we, we, you know, you probably have heard me talk about this here and there, the parasympathetic and sympathetic. So there's lots of different aspects to the elimination system, things that could that influence the elimination system. But primarily, uh, you, you know, again, when we start talking about having good elimination, uh, we're talking about good good poop and appropriate pee, uh, and and so we've been doing our morning water. Hopefully you've been doing all you know your morning water, and you notice that when you first get up in the morning, you you are you you have to pee. The body has detoxified overnight. The kidneys and the liver have done their job, and so now we've got uh, you know urine in the bladder that's putting pressure on the bladder because there's there's volume, and we go and pee. And the, I don't know if you've noticed, but the the urine usually in the morning is stronger odors, darker color, more color to it. My goal is with that morning water is to drink enough water to have that flush through me so that before I leave the house, if I'm one of those, I don't actually work out of the house, but before I start my work day, I pee again, I eliminate again. And that's really where my system has gotten flushed out of the toxins from the night before. All my cleansing is done. I'm ready to start the day, of course, and accumulate new toxins, um, which of course we are always daily accumulating these toxins. But that way I know that my elimination system is fresh and ready to go for what I'm dealing with today. And you know to, that's the liquid elimination. We'll talk more about kidney function and all the rest of that stuff, but this is just overview. Now the bowel function is ideally, again, that morning water will help to, you know, help the bowels to move. And, uh, you know, ideally with every meal, if you go back to how, uh, you know, we'll talk more about uh, poop. <laughs> This is a great topic, right? Um, so depending on where you are as you're listening to this, it's like, oh my gosh, okay. Yeah, we're gonna talk about poop. And, um, but 
you know, how frequently do we need? We'll talk more about that. But it's basically we want to be free, you know, fairly frequent, you know, maybe as up to three times a day, four times a day. Now, we don't want to be too frequent running to the bathroom all the time, urgency and whatnot. Uh, but we want to make sure we are not constipated or blocked in, in eliminating because if we're not getting good elimination, if the elimination isn't appropriate, then those toxins have to go somewhere and they end up damaging the tissues as they get stored in places. So stored toxins often get stored in the joints and we wonder why we have joint problems as we age uh, because the body is no longer eliminating. And this is this aging problem I see is you, people don't drink enough water because they don't want to have to pee and the reason they don't want to have to pee is because their joints hurt. Well, now they don't have anywhere for those, those toxins to go and those salt and the urea and stuff. And so these build up in the joints, making the joints more swollen and inflamed and, and hurt. So then I don't want to pee because I, I get too, it's too painful for me to walk. So I don't want to drink any water. Well, there's my problem. That's the, the reason I'm having this problem in the first place is because I'm dehydrated and I'm not drinking enough water and I'm not eliminating. So we want definitely want to keep the elimination system running smoothly. Now... One more comment about the elimination system from a standpoint of there are definitely things and aspects and beliefs and, uh, and emotional things that we want to eliminate too. So there's definitely, as I've already mentioned, there's a, there's a stress component to elimination, but there's also an emotional component to elimination. And there is, in my experience, there's a, there is definitely an overlap. If I'm not, if I'm holding on to something emotionally, spiritually, uh, then I end up holding on to something in my physical. In other words, I'm really not letting things go. I'm not getting bowel movements. I'm constipated. Uh, you know, things are not so good in that area if I'm holding on to something. So there, there can be a very uh, good correlation there. And there's where we can bring some tools. And hopefully at the end of this month, you'll have some tools that you can, you can look at using to breathing tools and essential oils and things that you can use to help... Uh, help improve that situation if you feel like you've got this emotional constipation that's that's sort of creating or or, or having the body mimic that in a, in a physical way so that you're physically constipated okay so what do we have store for this month uh like i said it's just a month we're talking about elimination we're also going to do uh, you know, talk about the five day nutritive cleanse so we'll talk about that this week uh and schedule that part so we're going to talk about poop and we're going to talk about the kidneys and pee and uh and so it's going to be great sort of three-year-old toilet talk time <laughs> it won't be that bad don't worry okay so um happy eliminating as we start to get into this month if if you're one of those who's eliminating too many times hopefully you're looking for some answers uh, I mean, hopefully I'll help you with some some answers to help, you know, regulate in that way. If you're someone who doesn't eliminate enough, uh, hopefully you can get that. If if you're right in the middle, then great. You want to make sure you do healthy, good, healthy eliminations. And we'll talk a lot about that this whole month. Um, so that's probably enough for today. Happy wellness, and we'll see you tomorrow.